TM. Um, to another speed run, and um, we're in the rating range 1600 to 1800. Uh, and as always, I'm going to try to uh, take you through my thoughts, typical mistakes my opponents are making, and, and hopefully help you learn to make that rating leap. Um, we'll see. So for the first game, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the Jabava London, which has been the opening which I've been playing throughout this series. Really, it's very simple to learn. It's very easy. Stage one, you develop your three pieces as such, and you wait and see what your opponent does. Now this is a move to try and stop Knight B5. So it's 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 not this is still theoretical. And now I'm gonna just play simple developing. I want to get my bishop into the game. This is a little bit odd. Already I'd say that's a slight mistake because it blocks the C pawn in and it the knight might not be brilliantly placed on that square. So I'm going to simply develop my knight and now my opponent is trying to chase down my bishop. Makes some sense. And again, let's just keep it very simple. How do I want my opponent to take that bishop? Well, I would like to open up the H file. So in exchange for losing the bishop, well I haven't lost it, I've got this great file. And my opponent plays another mistake. You've got to always look for the maximum you can get from your pieces. Speak to your pieces. And that bishop is now very unhappy with the last move because it's blocked in. It would have been much wiser to bring the bishop out to one of these two squares first. So just remember, speak to your pieces and these little things. And again, a move there, he's playing very quickly so I'm going to speed up a little bit, but this move doesn't do anything. Have a reason behind your moves. Okay, he wants to castle this way, um, so let's just prepare for him to do that, because then we can start an attack. And he's moving very, very quickly, isn't he? Uh, okay, so I'd like the idea of playing g4 here. Um, I'm also thinking about pushing with this pawn anyway to try and get some play over there. Let's let's do this straight away because if he moves the knight I get this central square. If he doesn't move the knight I get this very active idea. And he's moving a little bit too quickly I feel here. And now I'm going to move well, okay I've got to keep an eye on this one. Maybe we can go c4 open things up. I'm trying to delay castling because I want to use this file. But because my opponent's moving so quickly I have to say I am I am going to speed up a little bit here myself. I don't want to lose on time. And um, I'm going to meet Castling with d5 here, I think. And again, he's very quick, isn't he? I mean, he's got the wrong time limit here. He's playing more bullet chess than anything else. So this is a hard one to go into in-depth explanation. Okay, well, he's trying to do something in the middle here, but let's just keep the pressure up in the center of the board. I'll explain this game a little bit more afterwards, I think, because the speed of it means that it's quite hard to give in-depth explanations, but really he's moving too quick. He's played a couple of funny moves. He wasted time with this one. I was trying to keep my position quite flexible, um, and his position is, is pretty okay here, but I, I do feel I have a slight advantage because his pawns are on light squares and my bishop is more actively attacking them. For example, we can start now to aim against that one there, and I'm now gonna aim against another pawn, reroute my bishop, so this is my uh, idea at the moment, just to attack his pawns, try to win a pawn, and win a pawn, I've got a very safe kingside formation. Sometimes double pawns are actually quite good, and I feel that could be the case here, because they defend your king a little bit better. I have a pass pawn, pass pawns should be pushed. I don't actually, I haven't actually managed to win a pawn, but I'm now gonna use my assets. You've gotta use your assets as much as you can. So I'm just flying that one up the board. And now I wanna get my rooks to the best squares because my bishop is a nice blockader, it's a nice defender. And here, the rooks aren't doing anything. So again, I'm trying to speak to my pieces, maximize my pieces, and now, I think doubling up rooks makes a lot of sense because ideally this rook would love to come in on this square. If I do that at the moment, he will take, take and win a pawn. So I'm now thinking I need to get another piece guarding this square. Let's just see what he does against this. My main idea is to come in here, defending that square, threatening checkmate. Now if he goes rook here, this is where we've got to do some basic calculations. This rook, maybe I can even take it. 
and go rook to this square. That's a very interesting tactic. If he moves this rook here, okay, well, he's missed all of those things. And now, well, I have two great moves. This one is my idea all along. So I think we should throw that into the position, but also my queen. I'm looking at I'm looking at where his squares are weakest. It's the light square. So I'm trying to just use, I'm trying to target, you know, those, those points in his position. So light squares, let's hit those light squares. He's weak on the seventh rank. My pawn is good, good here. A lot of progress has been made. And now, um, okay, well, he's gone for this idea. I can simply win the exchange and I can win also by the bishop by coming in here check combining all the advantages that my position had to turn it into a material advantage my king again is showing just how safe it is um i may should we go here or do we bring the bishop all the way back i'm going to keep it so safe that everything's defended i'm going to let my queen do a bit of work here um still got to be one this position of course so how do we actually go about winning this one? Let's force this king up the board. Maybe it can be a target. Do we force it up again? This could lead to checkmate now with f4 coming. Maybe it was forced checkmate there anyway. And I think we are gonna checkmate with a pawn eventually. Um, it's always tough when you play these very quick players, but I, I do recommend that when you're playing this time limit, you don't play too quickly. I mean, blitz is blitz, but you know, trying to use your time a blitz is good for homing, honing your ideas, but it, it can also really be bad for your chess. And I think my opponent here, if I was his coach, I'd recommend get away from playing blitz because look, knight c6, artificial move. You're blocking in the c pawn. What actually is your knight doing there? Yes, you're developing a piece, but it's not great. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm playing a good developing move. Okay, that's not a bad move. He grabs my bishop. But then why didn't why don't you try developing your pieces? Speak to your pieces. E6, you played that immediately. You're making your bishop a very bad piece for the rest of the game. So you played this too quickly. Um, try to make your pieces good. I put my pieces now all on very good developing squares. Bishop D7, why did you play that move? What's it actually doing there? It's doing nothing. I'm thinking about what my opponent might try to do. I'm stopping that and I'm gaining space on the queen side and we can see around here he was probably doing actually okay you know not too bad but he was playing too quickly and what i'm trying to do i'm trying to open up the position because i see that his light squares are a bit weak and i'm trying to i, I notice where his weaknesses are and i'm trying to open up those squares because it's obvious he's going to castle that way now so i want to open up lines uh, towards his king there so the thing is again use your time but try to give and i, I think my opponent's problem in that game was not giving his pieces purpose okay so let's go for the same opening again um and i'm going to go for jabava london so we're going to get the same uh, same uh, free moves at the start so i'm hoping you guys you know if you want to know more about this my chessboard course is up and also uh, i have a ginger gem course just for 20 bucks or there's loads of free videos on my channel now again this move to me seems a bit peculiar because yes, I put my knight here, but I got my bishop out. And now he's stopping this move from occurring. And it's amazing, after this, we get the same position as in the last game. Is this a common mistake around 1600 here? A much better move from my opponent. He clearly wants to play e6, but unlike my last opponent, he's got his bishop outside of that dungeon first. Now I am gonna ask the question, whenever a piece moves into your own half of the board, ask it the question. And here, I'm gonna get more space. This is a very common idea to play against this bishop by advancing in this manner. Um, you have to be careful in playing this move because if you castle kingside, yes, it makes your position a bit weak over there. But I'm gonna try to follow it up by now playing this knight into the center. Again, this idea is the modern way of, of playing uh, the, the Jabbar for London. I'm gonna take with a pawn and this again is following quite common ideas in the Jabava London. Uh, when your knight goes here, if your opponent takes it too quickly, you can take with a pawn and the Jabava London knight plays a very important role. Now, I think I can take here, take, take, oh, sorry, I mean, I take the queen off. So, but then he's gonna take on c2. So maybe, maybe this is not as fantastic as I had actually imagined. Maybe I'm not winning this pawn here. 
because queen takes, he just takes my knight. Queen takes queen, rook takes. Remember, your calculation is very important. Practice your puzzles if it's slow. Pawn takes, then bishop takes here, and it feels like he's probably okay there. I could play a really weird e6 move to try and stop my opponent developing his bishop. And I'm kind of getting drawn towards that. But maybe I have to give up on winning this pawn. Knight takes, he goes e6, and instinctively he's getting very good development there. His knight is very strong, so I'm going to play it very safe. And I'm going to get rid of his best piece, his knight in the middle of the board here. Now my opponent has gone for this move, and I'm going to play a very interesting positional sacrifice. I'm going to play e6. If my opponent can play this, get his bishop out, he's okay. But I'm here really deeply thinking about what's my opponent trying to do. And by sacrificing a pawn, I'm hoping that if he takes this pawn, how is he going to get this bishop out? Okay, now I could take there with check, but I'm quite actually happy for him to take here. I'm going to win a pawn back probably anyway. Now, how does he get this piece out? If He, he can't play g6 easy, and he can't play e6 easy. So... I'm kind of happy with my decision. Now I guess I can take here, but then rook here. And I can move my bishop back, but then he might take here. And if I check him here, he goes king here. So you can see it's level calculation is more important. So if I play bishop c4 first, if he moves his king, how does he ever develop any of these pieces? So now he's totally tied up. He can't move the pawn, he can't move the bishop. This maybe is his only try but I can increase the pressure by moving my pieces into good squares. And I just don't know how he develops any of these guys. He's completely tied up. Okay, now maybe he wants to play some move like this. Um, so maybe I should have stopped that move last move if I was gonna be really accurate. I don't want my bishop to get tied up. Okay, so he doesn't stop it. So he's allowing me to take here. Now I think I can take with the bishop simply because if the king comes back, I've got bishop takes e6. Have I miscalculated this though? I've just realized he's got bishop f7. I could have screwed this up a little bit. Bishop f7, and I've allowed I've allowed some tactics, which is, but I've got rook here and taken there, but I've made it a lot more murky than I should have done because yes, I might have won a pawn or two doing it this way, but I really liked my position before where he couldn't move. Uh, I think that had much more harmony in it. This is still very good for me because I'm two pawns up, but it's kind of a bit, it's not as good as me. It's still probably completely winning. And it's actually unsurprising that the tactics there work for me because when you have a position of strength, obviously tactics are gonna work in your favor much better, right? Because you know it's when you don't have a good positional foundation that the tactics don't work. But I do feel actually that maybe coming in and grabbing that one was slightly um, slightly wrong. Okay, I'm now very simply gonna change my idea. I'm gonna try to win as many pawns as I can. And then I'm gonna try to swap pieces off, which I you've seen I normally do when I material up. Uh, I will trap his bishop. That's a Bobby Fischer-esque move. And um, well, I think he can resign very soon. So quite a actually smooth game in the end. My bishop, absolutely fine here. There's There's no way that he can trap it. Let's move it back. So I've got plenty of pawns, plenty of bishops. So I'm not, don't relax until you've won the game. Next stage, get my rook into the game. The rook is the most powerful piece. So let's get using that rook. Let's see if he falls into a checkmate over there, if he tries to move his king forward. So I'm also making his pieces as passive as I can. Let's advance. Um, he's got no counterplay. His rook has no way in. So I wanna play on as many areas of the board as I can. Um, I'm gonna now start using my pieces to maximum effect. And this pawn is a pretty juicy pawn. So we will aim to pick this one up. And of course, I just gotta be careful. Don't blunder, don't play anything too risky. Keep attacking things. Um, when I've got a safe pass pawn, uh, push the safe pass pawn. Think about what my opponent wants to play. He wants to move his king. So if he does do that, I can win a pawn there. So I'm stopping my opponent doing his natural moves. I'm also got my own ideas. Does this check actually help me? Well, it, it forces his king forwards. I'm not sure it really does. I'm, I'm gonna um, move it to a, a square where it's defended. There might have been other squares, but I'm not in a rush to win this one. 
Uh, I'm just wondering what is he going to do here. I am going to take these pawns. That's his last, his last hope is to take this one, take this one and try to queen these guys. Always think your opponent's last hope is they're going to try everything against you. Make sure you stop it. Okay, anything going on there? No, nope. so I'm just going to, you know, nudge another pawn there. And again, there's probably easy ways to win this. And now that he can't defend this pawn anymore, we can move our bishop back and attack that pawn again. He can't get his rook in an easy position to defend it. And uh, yeah, this is this is looking pretty pretty smooth. Let's take a pawn with check. And now everything is combining perfectly. And we're probably even going to be able to swap off uh, the rook's next move. Remember, when you material up, exchanges are very, very handy. Okay, we've got to watch out for stalemates. Don't think there's any stalemate things, but there is a checkmate. Okay. So uh, my opponent played this much better positional move there, and everything was looking kind of okay. But we got to this position, which I'm sure he's all right. Um, uh, but maybe taking with a pawn is a big mistake. I think he needed to take with a bishop. Because after e6, it might just be a very horrible position for him. But how do you find moves like e6 that will get you... They're, they're, this is probably a move I'd say 2,000 players plus would see. It's understanding concepts. And when your opponent has a pawn, so it's patterns, with a pawn on e7, this is a very common sacrifice. But it's really understanding how your opponent wants to... You know, your opponent and we always want to play very easy moves where we don't think a lot in chess until it becomes critical. Generally, you want to develop your pieces castle. So here it's thinking, well, he wants to play this move he wants to he wants to castle so let's just stop him doing that and when we get this structure you know he can really not move anything looking at his position again now i think this is okay but why didn't i just do something like this now because that would stop these pawns from moving forever and i think here it's a ridiculous situation where he can never get these guys out if he goes here i keep it closed i go here there's no way he can really ever get this bishop in the game. So I could have won a lot easier there, but that's normally, you know, I, I do make mistakes as well. We'll play one more final game at this series. We're now in the 1700 range. And the other opening I've been playing uh, so far has been the Black Lion. So I'm going to try to stick to some of my favorite openings so you learn them better. Stage one is to get the knights into the center and then play e5. Now, people also mention that this is also the Petrov, and I agree. The Petrov, I keep getting mixed up. Oh, what's the name? Not uh, not the Petrov. Oh, I can't. You know, that other opening. <laughs> and um, you have to be adaptable to what your opponent's playing. Now, the black line is really where you go for a G5, G4 idea. But here, it's indicated to me that he's going to try and castle queenside. Um, so this idea of playing g5 is not as effective, but c6 is always a good plan to control the center, get my queen to a good square, but also prepare b5. I'm gonna castle now, and I wanna see, and now that he's committed his king to the queen side, it's time to start formulating a plan, and every move I wanna play has to have purpose. And the other idea of the c6 move is to advance b5, and you can even do this when they castle kingside, but here, my opponent playing extremely quickly, which is very risky for him. I'm sure he wants to move his knight around here, but I'm also gonna move my pieces in. And we've got a very interesting situation where we're both attacking on opposite sides of the board. Now in this situation, time is very important. Whoever strikes first, he wants to kick me away with this and push, but I wanna get my mini idea in first. So I'm gonna attack that one and now I'm going to actually give up the center because in this situation, again, I think timing is more important. And by giving up the center, I can get another tempo against his pieces. Okay, so my next stage, how do I continue? Well, I've got to look what a target is. A2 is a bit of a target. This square, I'd like to get a knight into at some point, but I need to get rid of that bishop. So I'm going to play bishop e6, hitting a2, but also maybe going bishop c4 trying to swap off bishops because then my knight would have this lovely square okay he's defended against my mini fret but now i have a hook whenever opponent moves a pawn in front of their king you see a hook and you think how can i get into that hook well the natural idea now is to use Ari, 
and he plays very quickly he moves his knight in is he going to take here maybe is he going to check mate me down here maybe but this is why these kind of positions are so much fun that knight is too strong i'm going to eliminate it and it's all about the tempo got a rubbish ban outside by that so i'm sorry about that noise but I'm, i it looks to me like i'm ahead in the attack my my point of attack that i've got to be careful of is g7 right i've got to be very careful of that square so as well as thinking of the attack i'm also constantly thinking how do i defend my weak point if i need to and here something like knight e8 and bishop f6 gives very good protection at that point and also d6 is a little bit weak so putting a knight on this square also gives very good protection of that square so do i play this now am i worried about this sacrifice i don't think so so but i can't see an obvious way through over here so i'm going to play it i'm going to play this move and this also maybe allows my bishop to get a more active square of attack here so my opponent playing very well you can see he's um, one of the strongest players I played. He's coming at me. He's playing good aggressive moves. He knows what he's doing. He, he's going for it. Um, so this is what this is the kind of chess I love. Very double-edged. Very exciting to play. Every tempo can make a difference. So he's trying to now force me to make a decision about this pawn. Now I don't need to. Uh, I feel, um, but taking here, he will take here. How am I going to follow up there? kind of feels I need more firepower over here now I do somehow like the idea of doing this but I don't think there's anything wrong with opening up the a file let's flick that move in I don't think that can harm my position I'd love to get my queen over here but my knight is in the way I could try to get the rook and queen over like this that's a nice idea is he trying to get rid of this knight to weaken that square very interesting option so maybe I should just play this one first because sometimes you have to defend. And this is a bit of a weakness. So for example, if he takes it, at least I've got that one covered very well. I'm not worried about this pawn in the center. That's an irrelevant pawn. So he's still playing very well. And he's trying to attack, you know, parts of my position that are a little bit weak. Now again, he has got me on defensive because I'm noticing that if he takes here, I'm probably gonna to have to take my queen. And there's something about my king lined up there I don't like. So I'm gonna play another little defensive move. I'm also thinking, should I be playing knight c7 here? Um, knight c7 is a bit more active, isn't it? Can that knight get in somewhere? Does it have any, well, bishop c6, rook here, and if he takes, okay, he can't take there because I take his bishop. If he takes my bishop, I take with the queen. Let's move the knight in. That knight wasn't doing anything except for defending. And I think it is time to try and start again getting nearer his king. So this one was um, what I thought. And now let's go. There might be some tricks with knight c4. I don't want to lose my rook. The point is, if he takes here, I have bishop takes g5 check. If he takes my bishop... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I, I pre-moved there. If he does this, I did see he's coming down here. But I'm now hoping... That I have some play on this diagonal so this is a very tight game very close game if he takes here I was hoping I have some play I mean I can take off and take on a2 but I'm not sure about that I want to keep the Queens on if I give a check his Queen comes back and then his Bishop oh no I can't do a check because he'll go Queen takes Queen so if he takes here can I dive into this square Queen takes c7 Rook takes a2, threatening checkmate. This is where, you know, again, calculation becomes so much more important when you get, you know, you need to be able to calculate at these higher levels. Um, I think he should take here. I don't know why he's thinking here. I mean, the boring choice of me would be to take and take here. That's the boring choice when I'm probably okay. But I really want to play the more exciting queen here. Okay, well, I'm amazed he's played this move. This is very, very strange. Now I'm going to keep the queens on. I've got to move quicker. Why didn't he go in with this one? I don't understand that. Now he could go here. And he has. A bit annoying because we don't want to draw, clearly. Um, okay, well, let's take it off. We have to play this ending. I've got this knight c4. He's got to take his rook. This one is weak. Here takes takes this pawn is weak is he going to take there i take there 
do we just continue with this one? Let's 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 keep pieces on. So this is the closest I've been to losing, I feel. My opponent is playing very high standard. And um, all credit to him. This is really just in the balance, this one. I could lose this one. I could lose. Nothing wrong with losing. And he's played a mistake there. The only thing I think my opponent's doing a little bit wrong, he, he's playing a little bit too passively. Why Why is he started to play a little bit passively? I don't understand. Now, I've still got to win this game. But my opponent was playing such an aggressive opening and such aggressive play. And then he started to play a lot of these passive moves. Now, I don't know if this one is working. Let's try. Um, and... Okay, and again, a little bit passive from. Oh, why didn't I go c5? That was that was very silly. But I'm, I've got it. He, he's still doing okay here. I, I am. My last move was appalling. But why did he play those passive moves? He, you know, this is it. If you're going to play aggressive chess, keep playing aggressive chess, right? And um, okay. Oh god, my time. Right, I'm going to shut up because I don't want to lose. Obviously, which I might do here. My pawns are dropping. I'm going to need to um, start hustling. I've played this very badly it has to be said <laughs> okay so let's see if i can just fight back as much as humanly possible let's play g6 and take obviously we did have the draw that's my excuse you know how bad i am at quick play i'm a pawn down now and you know i always fall apart short of time Again, look, do you like the way I'm getting all my excuses in? I'm trying to just get my king into the center here. He should be pushing with this one. I'm not sure why not. And, okay, he's taking off everything. That's fine. The more he takes off, I expect, the more nearer to a draw it becomes. I'd love to get my knight here now. And this is actually gives me good winning chances. Can you believe it? Because look at his pawns. His pawns are all on light squares. And um, this, uh, oh shit, good move for my opponent. Okay, I haven't got enough pawns left to now win this one. That's that's for sure. But I've got a very nice blockade. I just need to sit here and he can't break this down. Surely. Surely he can't break this down. But, oh god, I'm playing so slow. Oh, look at this. And I think a draw is a, a fair result there. Well played to my opponent for getting the draw. Now, a, a little bit disappointing there, I have to say, from my point of view, because I was doing well. I spent a little bit too much time describing it. But he was he could have done a lot better there, and I could have at the end, because I had a good position, but I fell apart. Um, but he played very well. I mean, look at this. He's, he's playing very good moves. I bet his... We're going to see what... Have a guess what um, percentage accuracy he got here. I think it will be pretty high for someone of his rating. But the moves that he did wrong, well, first of all, this is too passive, you know? Why not keep playing aggressively and grab a pawn? You know, offering the draw like this, too passive. Um, now, he plays this, this is okay. And again, he, he must be doing okay here. This is just a very complex position. And it feels to me that this is too passive as well. I don't know, maybe it's okay. And around here, I must be winning. But... Um, a little bit too negative at times, but apart from that, very, very well played from, from my opponent. Now, I'm just going to uh, try and just uh, do an evaluation of the whole board. I know you can't see it. Let's see what the review is. And his accuracy, can you guess it? Not bad, I think, for some of his rating. Actually higher than mine. <laughs> is 86.4. Um... But you can see that even though his accuracy was higher than mine, if we look at the graph, it's a bit surprising because I was probably winning, especially around here, most of the way through it. But I did freak out in this position because I looked at my clock and the winning move is Rook C8, preparing some horrible stuff here. Okay, good to know. But anyway, uh, he played well, he deserved the draw. Remember, like and subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. Please tell your friends to do the same. Tell them about the channel, you know, and uh, yeah, you know, enjoy. And, it's, you know, it does help me a lot if you like and subscribe. So if you want to help me do that, this doesn't, you know, 
If you got this far, you probably can do that, surely. Cheers, until next time. Thank you.